So hey guys, in today's video, um, I wanted to record kind of what we are doing um, to deal with virtual learning, hybrid uh, learning in our studios, um, what I've learned as a teacher about um, this. Um, First of all, just kind of this one, this, I think this video will be a, a video of series. This one, it will be more just dealing with the audio, um, and visual settings, um, for our, our studio, um, and a way to kind of like, just make that better because ultimately when your students are saying, oh my gosh, virtual learning sucks. If you haven't made any adjustments to how you're teaching, if all you're doing is connecting in your zoom and, um, playing the music, it, it really actually does suck for them. There's just no way around it. Um, you, there isn't, unfortunately, the de downside about this, I think when we first started um, all of this virtual learning stuff, uh, teachers and studios were like, I'm not investing any money in this. This will be a few minutes. This is not a few minutes. In addition to that, I think we've co come to realize that this is going to be around a lot. Uh, or some for some time like I don't know that it'll ever go away I think you're gonna and if you it, eventually you have students will go like um yeah so I need to be in Siberia taking a class taking your class and you'll have to be like okay I guess I should figure that out right and so this gives options um and so you really I, I would encourage if you can um invest in uh making sure that your video and audio and video setup is as strong as it can be um, um so at our studio we are doing in person um, class, in person and hi like hybrid classes, which is a mix of in person and uh, virtual. Um, we are going through so so many um, so many things to ensure that our students are are as safe as possible. Obviously, the markers of the floor, obviously the mask, obviously you know the hand sanitize sanitizing like. Um, we also, um, go through a questionnaire, health questionnaire. We make kids bring different shoes or either we disinfect the bottom of their shoes before they can take class. Um, and then the other thing is we have a person, a professional cleaning company coming in twice a week, um, to ensure the space is clean as possible. We also do, um, so they clean and disinfect, which apparently are different things. Who knew? I just thought both of them would do the same thing. You say, I want to clean the space automatically you would be disinfected, but I, it's not how it works. Um, and then we also have them doing fogging. Um, so ultimately I can, I, I can say this while we cannot eliminate all risk of COVID, I think that we have done every possible thing we can to have in-person learning. And I still will tell you 40, only 40, maybe 30 to 40% of our families are still comfortable with it. So all I'm saying, we got to do, we got to do. Are, we um, basically gave all of our teachers a, a box of like audio visual box stuff, right? A box of box of audio vi visual stuff, um, and I'll show you kind of what we did um, for them. Everybody, we gave all of our teachers a wireless mic. We use our wireless mic in the studio, and so it makes sense that they would have them there. Um, our wireless mic has to go through a mixer, so we are, all of our teachers are get got this pile mixer. Um, this is not the one we use in the studio, um, but uh, I am going to link a video. This guy does a really great job of kind of explaining the importance of having like an audio mixer set up, um, and he knows way more about audio waves and all that stuff than I do. So I'm going to send that to you. Also, it's really great because I'm not going to show you how to set this up. I know how to set it up, but it takes forever and I don't have a camera that's going to follow me around while I set stuff up. So, um, I'm going to send that to you. Why would I replay that anyway? You can just look at the video and this is the one that I think he is using. Some other just really quick things that I wanted to talk about. Um, if you can teach in front of a mirror, I would encourage you to. Um, because if you point your camera towards the mirror, so if this was a mirror, you point your camera towards the mirror, then your students technically will see exactly what you see, right? they'd see what's in their normal mirror. Like when your st students look at you, they're not looking at your body while you're dancing and the if they're trying to see the front of your body, they're looking through the mirror. So that'll be what they normally see. So if you can teach in front of a mirror, that's great. Um, if you have a studio you can teach at, um, that would be great. Um, our studio, uh, we rent out our space and our audio 
are equipped with our audio equipment. So if teachers do want to um, teach virtually, they can come in our studio and just be online doing it that way versus having to invest in all this equipment. But if you don't have that, just any mirror would work. Like um, it doesn't even have to be a full length mirror, just big enough where your camera can get most of your body, right? If you don't, I'm not a person who's going to do well with saying, okay, so I want you to, I'm actually lifting up my left hand, but I want to tell them that I'm going to lift up my right. My right. That's too much for me. Um, you can flip your camera. There is a, a app called Snap Camera that allows you to flip your camera. You can try that. Um, and that seemed to work a lot more for students. As soon as you turn around and you do any turn in your piece, like, it, like I get confused. Maybe it's just me, but that I just... Uh, no so <laughs> so I would tell you if you can teach a mirror do it if not if you have an assistant one other option would be to have to, for you to teach and your assistant to be doing it backwards um, that would be another way to do, do it so that students can follow two people and then you can just um, highlight both of you two on the screens um, but if you have nothing else, one, and you are like not comfortable with the flipping of the saying left and right, like California style teaching, then what you can do is that you can just, I would say, teach shorter chunks, like one eight count, really, really particular about I'm lifting my right arm, wait for them to lift it with you. Do you know what I'm saying? Like that sort of a situation. And then, um, once you get to the eight counts, then watch them do it and make sure that everybody's on the same side. Um, that's man that's what i do when i teach at home because at home i didn't have the setup now i will but I, at first i didn't have the setup at home and so um that's what i would teach you know when i'm teaching during my daytime classes that's what i do um so that gives you some idea and some help but ultimately i'm going to go into the studio now and i'm gonna like give you an idea of what it will sound like um and then i'll also show you the different ways that you can do it if you don't have this set up and then you can just kind of determine which works or what which works and which doesn't work for you um but I'm pretty confident that you're going to find that at the very least, this audio mixer um, with a headset is going to really, really help you. Even if you're not a headset person, I'm not a headset person. Um, I didn't put it on before I meant to when I was in there, but um, just, you know, what I do is when I have my headset on because I do a lot of movement of my head, like I just put a nice little cute cap on top of the headset. It stays on perfectly. No problem at all. Does my head sweat? Absolutely. Is it a big problem? Not at all. So <laughs> that's just something to think. Anyway, so uh, give me five. I'll be in the other studio. I'll be in the studio in a second and I'll give you more information. Um, what's happening? You'll see the headphone, right? Like you can't really see it around my hair, but it's there. Um, and then um, we have an audio mixer that is uh, below me. So um, within the audio mixer, you have your um, headset attached to it, your wireless headset. This is fully wireless, so I can move about in the space and not be attached to anything. Um, not like that, but maybe a little bit more gracefully. Um, and then also um, we have a speaker, our Samsung speaker um, is what we use in the studio. But like I said, any auxiliary, any anyone with an auxiliary, and you do need one that has an auxiliary cord in it. And then I have it hooked up to my cell phone, which you probably can't see. Yep, you can't see, but it's, um, playing from my, it'll be playing from my, my, the music will be playing from my cell phone um, today. So um, also on this, we have a stand here on this stand is we got a Mac mini um, as opposed to a laptop in this space. It works so much better. I can't tell you enough. I think mainly because it has so many um, ports in the back and the laptops only have two ports. Um, also like um, I like that this is already set up versus a teacher having to come in. Oh, let me open the laptop and connect it and, you know, whatever. This is already set up. Um, and then there's no con confusion about like which camera is go coming from because there's only one camera that Mac Mini doesn't have a camera attached to it. It also, the same thing, it's attached to a 55 inch screen um, or TV, which we use as a monitor. Um, and so it is great. Uh, I bought a... Um, just the regular keypad, um, the regular like Apple keypad. And then I got a wireless uh, ma uh, mouse. So ultimately that's kind of how everything is set up. And the, la the camera that you're looking at, at again, um, 
this is a different camera actually this is a nexigo camera i like the other one better to be honest the amcrest works better for me um and you'll see in a second like occasionally you'll get a little kind of blurry um not super blurry like the first one was crazy like it just kept changing on me anytime i moved at all so this one doesn't do that which is great um you'll see that it's plugged it's uh pointed towards that's don't mind our air filter we are all ready for covid so have an air filter back there um, you don't care about that what you care about is what the music sound like sounds like and i understand that so we're going to play some music i'm going to give you an idea of what's what this sounds like um when you do your setup the biggest thing is making sure you go to your sound preferences and make sure that your sound uh your microphone is connected to the actual audio mixer um, and it isn't coming from your regular like kind of Mac or your camera um, and then you want to make sure that the sound if you want to hear your students and most of you should want to hear your students right because they'll tell you if they don't understand something and instead of going like okay I'm gonna have to beep you every time they can just kind of like come off of mute and say hey Miss Elena like I don't know what you're saying you know or I'm having a hard time hearing you or can you is that right or left or whatever you got to teach your students to do that at the right time. <laughs> so it's like, if you have a question, like, wait till I get to my thought. And then like, let's have a question at the end versus just like in the middle of you going through something. There's like, wait, because <laughs> that happens. Um, so we're going to play music. I'm again playing some royalty free music. Let me turn it back around so you can actually see me. Then I'll go into the mirror. Usually I would kind of just stand in here. Also, I have this camera. I mean, you probably would do this anyway, but I, not the camera, the monitor or TV, I put on an angle so that when I'm looking in the mirror, I can still see my kids without having to like turn my head because that actually takes just more time. Um, and it's just not super effective because there's kids here behind me and there's kids over there. So, right. So just have the camera on an angle so that you, uh, the TV on an angle so you can see it in the mirror. Okay. And I think you can tell that I'm grooving on beat, but one, two, three, a four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, a two, three, a four, five, six, seven, eight. One, a two, three, a four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. So you can tell what there. What I like about that is that you can tell that um, it's all on time with the music, which is very important when you're trying to, when you have like um, music driven um, dances like jazz or hip hop or um, some contemporary, right? Like it, you you really want and tap, like you really want to be able to make sure you can hear the, time, the beat, you, you're counting on time. One challenge is I will put it out there. Your kids are going to still get this or your, your students are going to still get this um, a hair late. So when you, when they hear it, they'll all hear it at the same time. So that's doable. So at least you see everybody dancing at the same time because they're all getting it. it just takes a second for a sound, you know, sound is wave. So it takes a second for it to wave out to them. Right. Um, and you're going through the internet. Right. But ultimately they're on the same time. Um, one way that you could do it, like if we were doing like, um, we wanted to see kids solo or something of that nature. One opportunity uh, is to have them play the song on their end. Um, but ultimately, I mean, I think teachers are, are smart enough to understand, like, are you on the beat? Are you doing this at the same time? And, and then I kind of also use like a, the barometer of what is it looking like for them. Um, if you have a teacher assistant, um, one way that you can also do that is like your teacher assistant is also online, right? That makes more sense if they're online um, and basically have them go with the students so that you know what the time is and you can see them along with that. Um, the last thing, um, and I think I mentioned this before, but um, make sure that you have your Zoom set to hide non-video participants. I know that you don't generally want to do that because when you're taking role you want to know if students are there or not and trying to go through the little participant line and, and look and to see if people are there but if you're trying to if, once people are in the class it's a great thing to have because then you can say okay so student a b c and d turn your cameras on everybody else turn your cameras off and all you see on the screen are those four students and if you have a teacher assistant you would have them keep their camera on the whole time so then you can kind of 
gauge how quickly they're going compared to how quickly the other students are going. But I can tell you that is still something that um, is a little still is still a bit of a challenge. If you're doing it for the purposes of like auditioning um, things in your um, company or whatever, you could have the kids record, you know, like do it together, you know, you see, you see it, give them feedback and then have them record. What I'm trying to tell students at this point, I mean, ideally, you want to give them auditions that are that mirror what they would normally have in the regular in the real world right um and normally nobody people might not say learn this choreography i'll send it back to me in a video and i'll see if that you know some people are going to say look not some people most the auditions are you're sitting there you get, recall the choreography or you don't right <laughs> you're successful or you're not right um but i think as things change i think this whole zoom and dance classes has really changed the narrative of what might actually occur now in dance and so i think it's important to allow students the opportunity plus this is tough like there's no way we can do all of the things we can but there is no way to not acknowledge the fact that learning from a computer is tougher than it what well, you can make things better but it is tougher than it would be learning in person so you want to you want to make that easier for them so i think we have to be willing to make some exceptions to that to things that we might not have done before so um but that's one way, but if not, like I said, individual auditions are fine. I mean, I think it's important for kids to get used to doing that. It's a performance opportunity regardless. Um, and so you could also do that. All right. So and one, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Good. So I'm going to take this off and I'm going to just show you me just using the regular uh, speakers um, for the computer with this. Ultimately, the share sound, like I said, it's perfect when you just want your dancers to dance, um, to hear the music nice and great for them, um, and you don't have an audio setup. But if you have an audio setup, they just turn their, their speakers up, theoretically. They'll hear their music fairly strongly. Um, and uh, But again, play with what works for you.